Hey everybody, welcome to T. Rory Cooks. Appreciate you joining. Today I'm going to show you how to make a porchetta on the rotisserie. It's quite easy and very tasty. I hope you stick around for this one. This is going to be good. T. Rory's chilling in the backyard grilling, cooking up some barbecue for you. T. Rory's chilling in the backyard grilling, showing you that you can cook it too. All right, now for the star of the show, what you really want is some pork belly with the skin on. All right, and if you can get it with the loin attached, even better, folks. Uh, I couldn't find what I needed locally, so I reached out to my good friends, Low Bells of New York, and they kindly provided me with this skin on pork belly. It's a beautiful Berkshire pork. Uh, Lowbells.com if you're interested. Gonna need some herbs, uh, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I'm just gonna take the leaf, the leaves off of the stems and chop that up really nice. I've got some uh, one lemon. We're gonna zest the lemon and use that to really brighten up the flavor. Some garlic, fresh garlic, uh, salt and pepper, of course, and for your fennel. I mean, I like putting fennel in my porchetta. You can use this green leafy part of the fennel. This is fresh fennel. You can use fennel seed. Just sprinkle some of this on your pork belly if you'd rather. Uh, I found this on Amazon. I thought I'd try it out. I've never tried this. Fennel pollen. It's crazy expensive though. This little bitty small tin cost me about $20 US. But I'll put a link to that down below if you're interested. Along with uh, lowbells.com. Alright, let me get the pork belly opened up and patted dry. Let me get all this de-stemmed and chopped up. And we will bring you right back. All right, now the next thing you want to do is you want to butterfly the pork belly open. Uh, I like to do that because it will give you more layers that when you, when you finally wind up rolling this thing up, you know, you'll have more layers in here if they're thinner. So that's the plan anyway. Um, I'm just going to cut this baby right down the middle right here. Make sure you get you a good knife to do this with. And don't cut it all the way through, just cut it right to the end. Come on. It'd be better if this was a little cold. It's been sitting out on the countertop for probably a half hour or so while I was cutting them herbs and stuff. Let's see how that's looking. That's about what you want right there. There you go. Now, see, now when you roll it up, you got a whole bunch more. And I'll start rolling it with this side that doesn't have the skin. This is what I just flipped over. This is the skin right here. You want the skin on the outside when you're rolling it up. Oh, and I was going to mention too, save your, uh, your rosemary and your thyme sticks, the stems. Now you can put these in your fire. Talk about smell good. Oh yeah, baby. And I'm cooking using uh, real wood today over the rotisserie, or under the rotisserie. Uh, let's see what we need to do here first. Let's put some salt. You go pretty heavy with the salt. And you can use uh, your favorite rub or whatever you want to put in here. It doesn't really matter. You know what, I may need to put a little bit of oil on here though. Yeah, let me do that. Let me put me a little shot of olive oil on here. That'll help all these herbs and stuff stick. Get a little binder going. Let me do that. There we go. Come on. Come on, T-Word. Doesn't need a whole lot. There we go. Rub it in. Just like so. Now, let's put on our herbs. Well, first of all, let me do this. Let me put on the garlic. Get you some nice garlic in there. I love me some garlic, y'all. Woo, doggy. That's good stuff. I, I used uh, five cloves of garlic, just so you know. And that should be about it. Some on the end down here. Some on that end down there. I almost need a bigger cutting board, don't I? All right, here's my herbs. I went ahead and uh, on the top here, you can see I, this is some of the fennel, but also the rosemary, sage, and thyme chopped up in there real good. This on pretty heavy. And I'm gonna use the fennel on this side. And I'm gonna use the pollen that I bought on this other side over here. There you go. Oh, this is gonna be pretty once it's all rolled up. Talk about smell good right now. Man, I can't wait to smell it when it's out on that rotisserie. Um, you can also do this in your oven if you don't have a rotisserie or if you uh, don't have a grill. I mean, you can 
You can do it uh, in your oven. Start off, uh, eh, start off at a higher heat, I think. That will uh, crisp up the skin or start crisping up the outside of the skin, kind of making cracklings, you know. Get, get that uh, about 400 Fahrenheit and uh, let it go for about a half hour, 45 minutes. And then at that point, you can, uh, let me, I was going to use some of this pollen I got right here. Let me put some of this pollen on this side over here. The fennel pollen. Um, that fresh, fresh fennel actually smells really nice. But this, uh, this pollen dust here is pretty cool, pretty cool too. So, uh, so yeah, start off about 400 in your oven, Fahrenheit, and then you can, uh, this is my uh, lemon zest, so uh, about 400 for 30, 45 minutes, and then you can turn it down to about 300 and let it go an additional, well, until it's cooked. You know, we're shooting, going to be shooting for about... Uh, I'd say about 145 internal, 145 internal Fahrenheit. Kind of skimped on that side, didn't I? All right, now we need to roll it up, and then we're going to get some butcher's twine, and we're going to cut it up. Oh, if you're interested in a good knife, check this out. This is a Dow Strong. Uh, I like this one right here. This is uh, I forget what series they have. They have several different series of knives, but uh, this one is really cool. It's got that that curve up on the edge. Really nice. Right, now, you just want to, again, start rolling with the, the side that does not have the skin. Roll it pretty tight, folks. There we go. And then you get towards the other part here. That's where the skin is. You can see the skin coming around the corner here. Just keep it pretty tight, folks, just like that. And look at there. Isn't that perfect? That's what I'll call some fine-looking pork right there. All right, now let me get this tied up. Do that again, like that. Okay. All right, the next step, after you have it all rolled up the way you want it, is to put some salt on the outside. That'll help dry off the skin. All right, now we need to poke some holes. So just start wherever and just start poking holes in that baby. All right, we done. Uh, we got the slits poked into the skin here. Coated the outside with salt. We got it all wrapped up, nice and pretty. Boy, that looks good, doesn't it? And again, you can take the ends and just kind of go around like this. Get any herbs that you may have missed, fell off. Uh, let's bring this outside and put it on the rotisserie. All right, guys. Let's see what we got here. I got my motor hooked up. Uh, this is an accessory, uh, an attachment that you can get for your Weber kettle. And if you flip it over, it'll actually fit on the Weber Smoky Mountain, too. So you can use this rotisserie on your kettle or your Weber Smoky Mountain. And I'll put a link. I think I got this off of Cajun Bandit. It's all stainless steel. comes with the motor and the, the spit and everything. But uh, let's go ahead and get this baby on. And just try to line up the middle as best you can. Like that. Let's put the... Come on now. If I can get this baby on, she's not wanting to go on too easily. It's poking through that skin. Come on. There's always a iffy part right here. I'm trying to get this baby all lined up. There we go. All right, folks. I don't think I need another uh, spit thing here, but I'm gonna put one on just in case. See how this is lining up. See if it's in the middle. Things go that way a little bit. So let's do that. Oh, that's hot. Okay. Gun that's hot. All right. Okay. Let's see if I can get this other one in. Just because I need to, uh, a little extra something, something. All right. Let's get that baby lined up for the motor. I think it's pretty centered. I don't think I have to worry about too much. There we go. Turn it on. Just like that. Don't forget you got your raid, your rosemary and thyme leaves. Go ahead and throw that in there. I'm using pecan wood on this. If you uh, just using charcoal, that would work fantastic as well. Um, I'm just using real wood because I just want that natural flavor. It's like cooking outside over an open pit, you know. Love that kind of style of cooking. So uh, if you're using charcoal, use some kind of a 
wood chip, put some smoke on it if you want. I'd go with a fruit wood like a cherry or uh, apple, something like that would work really good. This, uh, this is pecan, I believe. All right, we're gonna let her go. We'll check back here in a little bit, see what she's looking like. All right, folks, as you can see, I got a meter in here, reading my internal temps. Still, I just stuck it in so it's still estimating the cook. But the internal right now is showing about 123. I'm gonna cook it to 145 internal. And I'll show you what I'm looking at here. Uh, cooking about 350 Fahrenheit. Internal is 123, I'm cooking to 145. So it's still estimating the cook. Um, now, if you take a look at that skin, you can see it's starting to crisp up, kind of bubbling up like cracklings. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And uh, man, you can, that fire down there, <laughs> the grease dripping off of the skin, starting to hit that wood, and it, that just perfume kisses the smoke right back into the meat, man. That's some good smelling stuff right now. Uh, just imagine smelling bacon, okay? That's what this is. But instead of having the wood directly beneath the, uh, the pork belly, I took and split the wood. So I got some wood here. Get back, y'all. So I got some wood here, and I got some wood on this side. So we've got indirect heat coming. And uh, that, I believe, is what I need to do so that I don't burn up my meter for one thing. Uh, and the meter works great for this because it doesn't have any wires. It's all wireless. So it works great when you're doing a rotisserie cook. Uh, I'll put a link for them down below if you're interested. And I appreciate them sending me some uh, a meter to, to check out. I just recently got it. But uh, man, this thing's looking fantastic. It smells fantastic. Mm, mm, I wish it was done already. I'm ready to eat this, boy. It's gonna be good, good. Let me get you some more close up. See all that crackling going on? All the skin crackling up? We'll bring y'all back. It's about 45 minutes into the cook right now. All right, guys. Uh, I've reached 145 internal, but my skin is still not really crispy like I want it to be, so I'm leaving it on a little bit longer. I did add one more log just to kind of get some heat going. Um, it's starting to crisp up, as you can see right there as it turns. Uh, so I'm just going to let it keep going a little bit longer until I get that skin crispy. You can also take this off and put it in your oven at this point on like 450, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and that'll crisp it up within about 15 minutes. Um, or you can take a blowtorch, a flamethrower thing, and uh, you can Torch the outside of this baby with a propane or something. That'll do it as well. So there's plenty of options to do this. I'm just choosing to keep using the wood right here and just let it go a little bit over 145. So, uh, and then I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna tint it in foil for about 15 minutes and then we slice into it. I'll bring you back when we're slicing into it. All right, I'll let this rest about 15, 20 minutes or so. And um, it, it, looks, it looks great. Uh, just know that it won't get black like this usually if you have it in your oven, but out on a live fire like that, yeah, you're gonna get some some dark spots on it. That's no big deal. Cut the string off here real quick so we can give it a taste. Like, come on now, that string stuck. Come on, get it off of there. So I can get it off of there. There it goes. All right, now we're talking. Now, we'll cut us a little slice of that. Oh, y'all wanna hear this, don't you? Here, listen. Hear that? That's what you want right there, nice crispy skin. And I'm just gonna cut right where that rope was. Get you a nice serrated knife when you're doing this. Man, I wish I could smell this. Check that out, folks. That is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous you see why i split it in half because you can get the multiple layers like that and you can see all the green herbs in there man oh man i wish i could smell this oh goodness gracious all right one more slice what do you say there we go just like that folks just like that Woo! dog is still hot but my gosh, the smell, man. And check out all the all the garlic and stuff in there. That's going to be some fine eating right there, folks. Let's give that a taste and see what we got. I want some of that crispy skin. Let's take a little bit of this right here. Some of that crispy skin. Oh, yeah, baby. All right, folks, let's give this a try. Now, be sure and take and sop up some of them juices that's on your cutting board. And some of the fresh garlic that fell out of there, too, boy. Mmm. I already been sampling them. I promise you, this is phenomenal. This is really, really good. 
Mm, 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 maybe give some of that crust. Oh, gosh, man. The herb, fresh herbs. Use fresh herbs if you can. Listen to this crunch. That's good. My gosh. Holy moly. Folks, you got to try this. Mm. That is so good. And again, use fresh herbs if you can, man. That's the way to go. You know, if anything, I would have put a little bit more salt on this. But it's excellent. Super juicy because it's pork belly. And those herbs... And that fresh lemon, the zest, just make everything so happy together. This is a wonderful flavor. Now, you can also take this, add you some, uh, some mortabella, some uh, capicola, some prosciutto, some genoa salami. You know, put that in and wrap it inside the pork belly as well. Uh, that'll give you a little bit of extra something, something. Huh? See? Now, what you do is take this and slice it or cube it, put it in a submarine type roll, kind of like you get like a, a Subway or something like that. Put just mozzarella on top, roll it under the oven, just melt that mozzarella real quick. Uh, that'd make a perfect sandwich, man, perfect sandwich. In fact, I got some submarine rolls. Oh, whatever, I'm fixing to go make me a sandwich. But uh, I just want to check this out. This is so good, folks, and that crispy, crispy skin. Oh, man, reminds me of being in Louisiana and having me some cracklings. They sell the cracklings on the side of the road, in a brown paper bag, and you got that greasy bag. Oh, that cracklings is, them cracklings is good. And this reminds me of it a whole lot. Excellent. Hope you all enjoyed this. Folks, support your local businesses. This is an all stad Kolsch, old stad beer. See the side right there? Uh, Fredericksburg, Texas. Nice tourist town. If you're ever in Texas, check out Fredericksburg, Texas. Great little town. German town. And uh, cheers to everybody out there. Mm. That's so good, folks. I hope y'all give it a try. I know it smells good, don't it, Fifi? Fifi wants some, too. Hope y'all enjoyed this. If y'all did, give me some thumbs up. Hope you share the video. When you do, please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. Oh, and go check out Kenneth. What's New Barbecue and uh, North Texas Addicts on Facebook. There you go. What's New Barbecue on YouTube. Love you, Kenneth. Hope to see you soon, man. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good, Fifi. My gosh.